Within Studio 17, we now have a new loop function for our audio events and MIDI parts. In the past, if we were to select an audio event, so I'll select up top here and then press D, we can then duplicate this out for as long as we'd like. While the last one is selected, I'll press delete to remove those out. And if we hover at the edge, we have the double arrows that appear and then we can trim our audio event. But now if we come to the bottom right hand corner of our audio event or our MIDI parts, we can then click, hold and drag to extend this out for as long as we'd like. And this will then be looped for us. Now, if you notice that I can move this pretty freely here, and that is because our snap is turned off. So let's go ahead and undo that with control Z. I'll click here or we can press in to turn our snap on. I'll then come to the bottom right hand corner. Our loop tool becomes active and now you can see we are snapping to quarter notes and that's because our quantized value is set to quarter notes. So the loop tool will be affected by our snap and quantized value just as with most other of our tools that we may use. So now if I go ahead and play this back, Okay, we can hear that our original drum loop is now repeated for as long as I dragged out here. Now, there are a couple of differences between if we were to say undo this and use the regular D to duplicate this and the loop feature. So if we again come out and extend this like so, when we're making use of this tool, we have loop handles within this event. So if I were to say come to this first loop handle, we can see the loop tool appears. And if I were to click, hold and drag to the left, this is going to change the end of these individual loops. So if you take note of the waveform here, as I click, hold and drag to the left, that ending is then going to be changed for all of our loops within this event. So then we'll go come back and play this again. Okay, we'll go ahead and undo that. Now I'll then again come back to this loop handle and this time I'm going to hold down Alt and just notice that that circular arrow is gonna move from the right to the left. So now when I drag to the left, this is going to change the start point of each of these individual loops. So again, just take note of the waveform so you can see visually what's happening here. Again, I'll hover, hold Alt, click, hold and drag to the left. And we can see that that start point is being changed for each of the loops within this event. We'll again listen to this. So this is a pretty cool feature and a significant difference between using the regular D to duplicate our events. And another difference is that we can hold down Alt and then select individual loops within this event. And we can remove those out by pressing delete. Let's undo that. While it's selected as a range, I can also click, hold and drag this to another area of our track or within your song. Now, if I were to right click on this event, we can see we now have a loop checkbox here. And if I were to go ahead and deselect that, that's going to remove all of those loops at one time. Now, also, if I right click and just check this box right now, we don't have we haven't extended this out to add any loops. But if we're in the original state of the audio event and I right click and then check the loop, this is going to be extended out all the way to the I'm going to press shift and S so we can view that entire event. This is going to be extended out all the way to the length of our song. Now I'll come up here and let's activate our markers and we can see that the end marker is here. So when we apply that loop checkbox to an audio event, then that's going to extend it out all the way for the full length of our song. Let's undo that. 
And we'll zoom in again here, because I'd also like to show that if we have an audio event, say on bar eight, I'm gonna double click to add a empty event here. And then I'll come back to our first drum loop and let's again, right click, I'll check the loop. Now in this instance, it's gonna be extended out to any event that we have within our track. Now one final difference between using the D shortcut key to duplicate and the loop tool, let's go ahead and remove that empty event out. And we'll go ahead and extend this back out. Now, if I were to go ahead and double click on this looped event, now if I come up to the gain handle here and then take this down, that's gonna affect this entire event. So if we perform an edit like this and we make use of the loop tool, then that's gonna affect everything within all of the loops within this event. Let's hold control and click on that gain handle to take it back to zero dB. Now with this selected, I'm gonna press D to duplicate this out. And then using the shortcut, if I double click on this, then we can see our gain handle here. And if I adjust that, then we're just adjusting the audio level for this one discrete event. So that's kind of one of the final differences between using the shortcut and the new loop tool. And let's close out our editor. And then here I have a MIDI part. Let's zoom out a bit. And this is going to apply to our MIDI parts as well. So again, coming down to the bottom right hand corner, if I click hold and drag, then we extend out as we've already seen. And of course we can come to the loop handle here and adjust the endpoint of the loops within this MIDI part. And as we saw with the audio event, if I hold down alt, we can then change the start point. Now the final thing that I'd like to mention, and we'll go ahead and undo that, is that if I were to come down to the loop tool and click hold and drag this in, and then move away from here and then come back, reactivate that loop tool and then drag this out, we're then gonna be looping these two notes that we have here. So that's yet another way that you can use this new feature. If you have a particular area of your drum loop or any MIDI part, anything at all, you can then hone in on that particular area by coming to the bottom right, drag it to that particular area, move away, and then come back and extend that back out. And then you'll just be looping that the particular region or area of the event that you'd like. Okay, so this has been a look at the new loop tool within Studio One Seven. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training, I do provide that through Zoom, and this can help you speed up your learning curve if you're having issues getting started with Studio One. If you'd like more information on that, check out the pinned comment below or the description of this video, and otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.